Michael. Tony, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. It's uh, great to be off-site and out of the studio and come somewhere different in the city. I always love when people come downtown and not just spending time in the office, but also walk around and spend some money downtown. <laughs> so please, when you leave, make sure you frequent some of our great uh, coffee shops around I, here. I enjoy that very much because I actually am a Chicago native. I live in Lakeview. Okay, so great. I call Chicago home and we're here to tell the story. Uh, I Good. think it's a great place. And today, you know, I think this was too timely of a conversation to have because life sciences in Chicago is growing. It's been a very important topic for you and for World Business Chicago. So before we dive in, why don't you just tell me a little bit about who you are, where are we, and uh, love to see what we can talk about today. Yeah, uh, my name is Michael Fasnacht. I have two roles uh, for the great city of Chicago and the region. First, I'm the CEO of World Business Chicago, which is the economic development arm for the city, meaning we're helping that company stay here and expand, continue to invest, and secondly, attracting new companies at a nationally or internationally to move to Chicago. Like last year, we had over 45 companies relocating to Chicago. And then third as well, we're just promoting the region and the city as, as a great uh, place to do business. And my second job is uh, at night as a volunteer, as I'm the chief marketing officer for this city. So always thinking about how can we promote the city and the region, how can we highlight the great things are happening? Because as you know, the the traditional media loves to focus on the, the fire and some of the negative and I think my job is to, to highlight the positive things, uh, either company-wise or personality-wise or narrative-wise. Well, I think that's fantastic because, you know, I, I like to call kind of the theme of this conversation for the greatest stories never told. And I think there's so many stories about Chicago that we could be here all day. But yep. for the sake of where we're at today, life science in Chicago, there's a booming market in Fulton Market, in the West Loop. There's a lot coming to Chicago. In some of those spaces and those aspects, let's talk a little bit about your involvement with biotech and coming to Chicago and how we're kind of embracing the growth and the things that we want to see to, to let companies know why it's so great to be in Chicago for that for that space. So it's probably useful to take a step back. So when the pandemic hit in 2020, kind of like six months in, we thought we have to look, how can we rebuild the economy and continue to thrive post-pandemic or even during the pandemic? And then with, with all of smart minds and some consulting firms and research firms, we tried to identify a few industry sectors that we think we have all the key ingredients to grow and also the all capacities, but we also still have some potential for the next 10 or 20 years. And we identified four industry sectors, uh, food and ag, uh, manufacturing, logistics, and life science and biotech. Because we saw the demand, not just because of the pandemic, we saw the growth projections, and we saw we are not top five player in North America, maybe like number 10 or number 12. And then we made as well analysis, what are the things that are kind of some of the impediments of really growing the sector here in Chicagoland? And we found immediately two. One is a lack of uh, available lab space, wet lab space in the, in the region, in the city, and second, kind of a lack of, we have all the university IP and brilliance, but we don't have the tech transfer to commercialize this IP here with the space, with the town, with the capital. So really then tackled both with a lot of the developers here in the region on, on creating more lab space. And then as well, how can we work with the universities closer in venture capital and private equity to make sure there's sufficient tech transfer from the university system into the real world? Well, I think that's a great point because a lot of times in the biotech space, um, you need the support and some of the um, collaboration from the universities, both public and private. And I've lived on the East Coast. I've been out West. And I think when people think biotech or life sciences in anywhere in the U.S., it's California and Boston. And interestingly enough, as a lab owner myself, also being in the healthcare and construction space, too, I had not considered Chicago, my own home at the time when I was in New York thinking about starting a company in life sciences as a wet lab to come to Chicago. But so much of that narrative has changed. And I think it's because you have both aspects now of the public side and the private side. You know, can you talk a little bit about some of those partnerships, those, you know, collaborative efforts to get people to understand that there is an ecosystem here that can support their endeavors, their research and development? So if you look at the life science ecosystem, this just not happen by accident. You have to be creating this ecosystem. And how we think at World Business Chicago, we are like a super connector across four worlds that normally don't talk as much. There's larger corporations, 
A second, the whole startup ecosystem. Third is venture capital and private equity. And fourth are universities. And then you have a clue in between. You have real estate developers and service firms in between. But these are the four worlds. And we are the super connectors. So we're doing life science or biotech specific convenings, conversations, research papers to make sure there's enough dialogue. Because only if these four groups and the key leaders talk with each other, then you can build an ecosystem. I think we have done, not just because of World Business Chicago, if it's Polar Innovations with John Flavin, if it's you know even Sterling Bay with, with Lincoln Yards, if it's the DPI and the 78, if it's Fulton Market and, and Trammell Crow, so many players. And we, since we are kind of like the, the non-for-profit, um, we love them all. So we have the power to bring them together, both also with the support of the mayor's office and the governor's office. I think we have done a pretty good job. And then I think if you look at the rankings now, there just came some new numbers out. We're probably like top five, top seven. So we moved up quite a bit. Um, clearly the, the most recent Chunk Zuckerberg biotech decisions where we competed against 60 other cities in the final against uh, New York and San Diego. And I have to give the, the three universities who are really leading that, U of Chicago, Northwestern, and University of Illinois System, tremendous uh, kudos because they be really the backbone of this application. We won. You know, uh, we made this public. That's not a secret. We are competing you know, for Upper H, uh, one of the key spokes, um, which is kind of a federal program to build a biotech center with two or three nodes and, and one hub in Washington. Well, I think what's great too is if you can look at some of the positives after the pandemic, um, people really started to th- rethink the importance of space. And I think what I love about the city of Chicago is we have that. You know, you go to, I've lived in New York City for five years before I came to Chicago and I've been in Boston, worked in Boston, lived in Boston. They're a little bit confined. And I think what's unique about Chicago as well is you have also a life balance where the city has so much more to offer beyond just the technical components, the ecosystem, the VCs. It has the live, work, play and learning aspects of that industry as well as just for people's well-being. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of those efforts too? Because I know that ties in. And it's very important to your office to kind of elaborate on some of those benefits that Chicago brings to people that are considering coming here. Yeah, if you look at the the traditional criteria why a company wants to invest or relocate, is clearly um, you know the the talent is always number one, two, and three. And clearly, we we focus on two or three other elements that are more and more important in conversation. One is climate resiliency. So when we talk, if you look at the Google decision moving into Thompson Center, they're looking at 10 or 20 years, and people don't realize enough the Midwest, and Chicago's its gateway in the Midwest, um, is the most climate-resilient region in North America. And this becomes more and more important every single day. Second, I think the values that we as a region, a city have as, as a welcoming region, as an inclusive, matters, especially for young talent. And then third, you talk about space. And for me, not just in the city, you probably know we, we started like a regional economic partnership with all seven counties. Because I think the traditional thinking, we always just focus on the city. But I think that's wrong. We have to look at the Chicago land economic uh, impact and power. Because then we're talking the double GDP, we have 10 million people. And some of the large pharma companies are not in the city. They're primarily headquartered in the suburbs. And that's fine. They might build an outpost in the city. But we have to be much more inclusive thinking region-wide and not just kind of almost artificial city limits. Well, and I really appreciate that perspective because I think what's really great for people to hear about is all of the effort and the time and the dedication that it takes before you can even put a shovel in the ground or renovate a space. You know, as builders, as people who are in that space, we can appreciate what it takes just to even get to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's been a critical time in the last 24 hours because – you know, as you have a mayoral election and things change, how do those policies and those types of things impact sort of that progress? Because obviously everyone wants the benefit of Chicago to become and keep growing as one of the greatest cities in the U.S. I'm biased. I'm a homer. I love Chicago. I think it's the greatest city in the world. Um, talk a little bit about, I mean, I know it's it's been less than 24 hours, but how do those things affect kind of the progress and, and the way forward as we go? You know, are there communication communication efforts that say, hey, you know, here's what we're working on and we want to keep going because it'd be hard to kind of hit the reset every four years because obviously there are different ideas and different programs that people want to to see changes in Chicago for the better. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I think that the, for us as World Business Chicago as an organization and, and the new mayor, so mayor like Brandon Johns will be our chair uh, and, and he reached out to me last night. So we, we have conversations 
Um, our north is always about equitable economic growth. It's not just economic growth for, for a section of, of, of Chicago or just downtown or just in the neighborhoods. It has to be economic opportunities and prosperity for residents in every 77 neighborhoods. We just have to admit that the town in this great city is equally distributed. Opportunities are not. So, and I think sometimes there's a false dichotomy. We say, yeah, it's either downtown or the neighbors in South Miss side. And I don't believe in this. I think to be a true global city, we have to make sure there are opportunities for every resident, independent where you live. Um, and, and I assume that uh, if we look at uh, both candidates and, and, and the mayor like Johnson, they, they have a similar North Star. There might be disagreements of where to, how to get there. And, uh, you know, I work closely with Mayor Lightfoot over the last uh, two and a half, three years. And I think this is, this is a very complex, very complicated, uh, high-profile position. And we are supporting uh, uh, Mayor like Johnson and, and we'll make sure as well that, that the business community with its focus on truly equitable prosperity, has a voice, is a partner, an ally. Um, and I think this is a learning journey for all of us. And uh, I think I'm maybe optimistic about Chicago and Chicago, and I think the, the brightest days ahead of us. But we have a lot of hard work, and we need the business leaders to make this happen. But we also need to see the whole city, not just a fraction of the city. Well, I think that these conversations are encouraging um, because it, you start to hear themes and patterns. And the thing I love is everybody wants this city to grow and create more opportunities and better lives for everyone that's a member because we all are calling Chicago home. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's great. And I can't thank you enough for the work that you and your office have done. Um, obviously, there's a lot more work to be done. But I think I hope people at least walk away from this feeling encouraged knowing that whether it's life science or it's, you know, the commercial markets, whether it's where the Chicago Bears ended next. You know, we're all under the same banner, and that is the city of Chicago, and that is our home. Oh, so. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And whoever listens, my, my, my advice to, to business leaders, I was a CEO for most of my professional life before I did now here, kind of like a semi-civic uh, role. Um, um, every le business leader cannot just be a business or commercial leader. Nowadays, to be successful, holistically successful, you need to be a civic leader as well. Whatever your passion point is, you have to lean in and we learn. I learn every day something about a neighborhood, about leaders who do amazing projects I've never heard of. And I just encourage all the business leaders, lean in, get to know really the city and all its facets, with all its challenges, with all its beauty, with all its potential. And that's, if people are both business and civic leaders, then we can build a tremendous Chicago. Well, I was going to ask you for your closing thoughts, but you beat me to it. Uh, thank you, Tony, for having me and uh, appreciate uh, everything you do yeah, as well for our city. Really thank appreciate you. the time. Thanks for being here.